So if you watched our last video on kind of general pool care, I'm gonna show you the filter system now. Um, this is, this one's in a shed. Uh, it's a little loud in here, so bear with me, but I'll do my best. Before I go in the shed, let me explain the basics of a pool. So every pool has what they call a suction side and a return side. Suction meaning the skimmers, the drains, or any suction ports on the wall. So suction is where the water comes from the pool into the filter system. Um, from there, the water gets filtered and goes back out through the return lines. Oh, the returns. There's all different names for them. Jets returns. That's, you know, the port you see on the wall with the water shooting out. You know, I see them in the spa here. So that's basically the basics of every pool. Obviously, some fancy pools have different features like water features. Or this one's got a, a cleaner line. Stuff like that. But the basics, every pool has a skimmer, usually a drain or a suction line and returns. Uh, some of the older pools, you only see skimmers. Um, a lot of the newer pools, you see multiple skimmers, um, the new two return, uh, two drains, and usually wall suction. So that's kind of your basics. Water comes out of the pool through the suction side, goes back in through the return side. So let me show you what that looks like in the filter room. So I'm gonna shut this off for now so you can hear me. So bear with me here. There's a lot of piping going on. It looks confusing, but it's actually not that bad. So generally, 99% of pools have the same setup. Uh, above ground pools, completely different, so don't, you probably don't even want to watch this video. But for in-ground pools, you got your pool pump. That's this guy here. The lines coming into the front of the pool pump are the suction lines. Like I said, that's your skimmers, your main drains, all that stuff. So this pool, they're labeled with Sharpies. Some pools, they're labeled. Some pools, they're not. Um, a lot of them have valves. It's always good to have valves. So on this one here, we got the spa, the spa bottom drain. We got the skimmers and we got the pool main drain. This is an older pool and if it was me building it, I would have had a separate line for each one, but it is what it is. Every pool is different. So this valve here can control, shut the skimmers off, can shut the main drain off, and it can shut both of them off so you can just run the spa. Um, while I'm talking about these valves, a lot of people don't know how these valves work properly, but basically this is a Jandy valve, very common valve. Where it says off here, picture a door. So wherever this off turns, that's where the door is going and it's shutting that off. So if I wanted to shut off the pool main drain, the door is blocking that now. If I want to shut off the skimmer, you turn it and that shuts that off. And if you want to keep it open, you just put it to the side and everything's open. So essentially here you want everything open. So the water is going to come out of your skimmers into your pump. There's a, a secondary basket in here. So anything that doesn't get caught in your skimmers are going to get caught in the pump basket. Then it's going to come up, go into your filter. This here is a diatomaceous earth filter or a DE filter. Um, this is where it gets a little confusing because there's different types of filters. Uh, but this is a, a DE filter, specifically a Pentair DE filter. So we got a lot of uh, mixing here. We got a Hayward pump with a DE filter with a Hayward heater. <laughs> so we see this a lot. They're not all the same. But this is an FNS Plus. Uh, I think it's the big guy, the 60 square foot um, DE filter. So some. Pools have DE, some have cartridge, some have sand, so this might not apply to all of you. But for anyone that has a DE filter or a sand filter, you have a multi-port valve. Sand filters, these are usually on the top of the filter. On DE filters, they're usually on the side, but they're all the same concept. So cartridge filters, if you have that, completely ignore this. This doesn't apply to you. Cartridge filters, your water comes out into the filter and right back out. There is no multi-port valve. So sand filters, DE filters, you got your multi-port. You want on a filter at all times. So that means the water's coming in, going through your filter, getting cleaned, coming out. Uh, when it's time to clean the filter, so your pressure gauge here, your starting pressure, this is where it gets a little confusing, so bear with me. Um, right now it's at zero because it's not running. When I turn this on, this has just been cleaned. Your pressure gauge comes up right now at 11. So that's your starting pressure when it's clean. On, uh, on Pentair ones, they have a start and a clean. On uh, Hayward ones is arrows. So when this jumps up 10 PSI, usually close to 20, it, that means this filter is getting dirty and it needs to be cleaned. I'm going to shut this off again so you can hear. Essentially, so as far as pressure goes, you can do a lot of troubleshooting here on your pool system. So if, if the pump's running and this needle is very low, usually 5 PSI or lower, that usually means there's a clog coming from the pump and basically the water flow is weak. If this pressure, if this needle is high, so if it's up to 20 or higher, 
that's a sign that this filter is dirty or there's something going on after the filter blocking the flow, causing the pressure to be high. But 99% of the time, it's a dirty filter. Um, and obviously, if it's running 10 to 20, that's usually the ideal range. So this filter's running great. There's a bleeder valve on here. Most filters have a bleeder valve to bleed air. If you open it, you can hear the air hiss out if there's air in it. That bleeds the air out of the system. Um, that's about it. So basically, you just want to keep an eye on your pressure gauge. Ideally, you know, watch what your starting pressure is. And when it gets up, you know, higher, about 10 PSI higher, you're going to need to back out your filter. So that's when you come down here to the, the multi-port valve. If you need to backwash, what you're going to do is you're going to shut it off. You never want to turn these valves when, it's, when the system's running. So make sure it's always off. Push down your handle. Spin it over to backwash. I'm not going to do it just because it was already done today. Um, but what you're going to do is this one is hard piped out. If you have a hose, you're going to roll it out. You're going to go back over. You're going to turn the, the timer back on. And that's going to stop backwashing the filter, essentially cleaning it out. So it's going to rinse all the crap that's in the filter out. And usually you want to backwash for like a minute or so. Everybody has different ways of doing this. What I do is I backwash for a minute. I shut it back off. I come over here to rinse. I usually do about a 30-second rinse. And then I go back to backwash. Do another minute, 30 seconds, another minute. I do that three times, and I find that's the best way to backwash a filter. And on usually the last time I do a little bit longer of rinse, I'll put it to filter, and sometimes I'll even run the filter for 30 seconds and do one more backwash. And I find basically that just agitates the filter and cleans it better. But this is coming from me. I, I've done this for 17 years, so that's my way of doing it. <laughs> um, if you read you know, on a lot of websites and help forums, they tell you just let it run for three minutes. That usually doesn't help because what happens is the loose stuff comes off and then the stuck stuff just stays and you're just wasting water. By agitating it, by doing backwash, rinse, and all that, it helps mix everything up better and you get a lot better backwash. So when you're done backwashing, it goes back to filter mode, you turn it back on. For DE filters, you're going to need to add more DE in, which uh, this guy I think is a 7-pound uh, filter. You want to check on your label how much DE you need. And you're going to put that proper amount through your skimmer. That's going to come in, coat your grids, and you're all set to go. Sand filters, you don't have to worry about it. Put it back on filter, you're all set. And cartridge filters, everything I just said, ignore. <laughs> Except for the pressure gauge pipe. Um, on here, there's also a waste setting. This is if you want to drain water. What this will do is it will take water right out of the pool and just drain it. It won't go through the filter. It will just go right out of the pool and it will drain. Closed is usually for if you're working on something um, and you want to close it, you usually never need that. Recirculate. What that does is that basically recirculates the water. So it, it, the water will come through, it will bypass the filter and just go right by it. So this is good for like if you have a really, really green pool and need to move chemicals around or you're having an issue with the filter and you just need to move water. Um, and that's about it. Uh, there's also a winterized setting. That's when we close the pool, but uh, that you don't have to worry about. Um, so water comes through the pump gets filtered in this case goes into the heater here will get heated and then back out to the pool so on the pool you get your return lines so that's kind of the basis of every pool you got your suction lines the water comes in from the skimmers the main drains into the suction into the pump pump pushes it through the filter in some cases, if you have a heater it goes from the filter into the heater and then back to your pool in some cases, if you don't have a heater it goes right from your filter right back to your pool so i'm going to turn this back on go out to the pool again i know i went over that pretty quick but um there's many different types of pool filters there's many different setups so every pool situation is different above ground pools are different um in ground pools are all different this one's a little more complicated because it's got a hot tub on it um got a heater but generally pools are all the same they all have skimmers they all have suction lines they all have main drains they all have um you know returns all that good stuff um as far as a couple quick troubleshooting things while i'm making this video because i've had a couple questions this week you notice your flow is weak so right now the system's starting back up it's blowing the bubbles and everything back out first thing to check is check your baskets make sure the baskets are clean if the baskets are clean you're still getting low flow check your basket on your pump if that's you know clean backwash your filter if that's still not working there's a chance that there's either an issue with your pump the impeller is clogged or your pump's burnt out. Um, you should always see flow coming out of the jets. Um, trying to think of other things. Um, random things that can happen with pools and questions and you know, stuff like that. So um, I won't go into detail in this video, but um, I just want to kind of give the basics while I'm here and have a few seconds of how pools work. 
um, and, and you know go over some things um, every pool is very similar they all have the suction lines like I said they all have the return lines they all have a filter they all have a pump so operation they're all <coughs> very similar some of these newer pools are automated so that's a little different this one's not this is the old school with the timer um, a lot of the newer pumps are varial speed pumps that the timers are built into them so there's a little bit different stuff there so some of the stuff probably won't apply to you in this video um, but this is, like I said, this is just your basic pool, basic pool timer, basic pool pump, um, standard single speed pump that we see a lot of these pools here in New England. Um, obviously newer pools, um, you're probably looking at this video and saying my pool looks completely different. And you're right. A lot of these newer pools, everything's automated and it's different. But uh, for the most part, 90% of our customers have a similar situation to this and hopefully this video helps. So um, I got to head out of here. I got a lot more pools to clean. It's Memorial Day weekend, Friday. I got a lot on my, my, my plate. So hopefully uh, these last two videos I made are a little informative. And if I get a free second, um, I'll make some more. <laughs> um, you guys have any questions or anything like that, put them in the comments. Want to see any videos or explanations on pool stuff, let me know. Put it in the comments. Um, and as I've always mentioned to YouTube followers, uh, if you don't follow us, go on our Instagram. There's a lot of content on there. I've just been so busy, haven't been able to post much on here. Uh, and if you're a pool owner and need help, um, feel free to message us and we'll uh, see what we can do to help. Thanks, guys. Have a good Memorial Day weekend.